guess what? You still have time to celebrate anal August. That incredible pun is not lost on me. Anyway, the pleasure chest is celebrating with a fabulous collection of their most popular anal toys, from petite vibrating plugs to B Vibes master's degree anal education set, which is perfect for broadening your backdoor play step by step. Check it all out at thepleasurechest.com or find a direct link to the collection in the show notes for this episode. Again, that's the pleasure chest at thepleasurechest.com. What would it take to arouse your life, to experience more connection, more pleasure, more realness in and outside of the bedroom? I'm August McLaughlin, and this is Girl Boner Radio. Just big surprise and like, wow, okay, what's happening? Just realizing in that moment, oh my gosh, like my body is so freaking powerful. And like, I just did that. And and it came even with an incredible like pleasure wave or pleasure experience. Mariah Freya is the co-founder of the sex ed platform Beducated, and her journey to that work has involved plentiful ups and downs, fueled by curiosity, libido challenges, and a mighty sexual breakthrough. Mariah's curiosity came first. Some of her first sexuality memories involved Barbies, back when she was five or six. I caught my parents a couple of times having sex and I started like playing like what I saw with my Barbies and it, it sort of like evolved from these like little role plays where my Barbies would <laughs> all be naked, you know, just in the box where all my Barbies would lie in, and they would naturally always be naked even though you have a lot of little dresses and stuff to put them on but somehow I just like that you know idea of yeah just everyone can walk around naked. Mariah's family was into that idea too. Fun fact in Germany there's a lot of nudist beaches so my grandpa he I'd say he was a more conservative person but not with his body and he would actually go nudist bathing with the whole family so I grew up in a nudist bathing family so somehow like that whole like being naked was always very present to me and I th I think I continued exploring my sexuality kind of in a quite natural way I'd say especially with my friends we knew it was something sort of secretive so we didn't want to get caught but we were quite like open in a way we must have been like seven or eight just sort of exploring each other's bodies in, in just a very naive and just very innocent way without really having all that later on projection that you know with teenage years and shame and not liking your bodies luckily Nobody ever caught us, so we didn't get that moment of like, oh, how dare you? You're not allowed to do that. So we just, you know, felt okay doing what you are doing. <laughs> oh, I love that. It's like that childhood curiosity. There was so much joy in your voice as you talked about it. Yeah, that was a very blissful time, actually, to just be a sexual being, right? Mariah said she loves thinking about that time, especially given the not so blissful phases of her sex life she experienced later the kinds so many folks experience during her teens that bliss took a turn toward shame in my teenage years i was um, naturally a very very skinny girl like i've always been and still am and if you look at my father he also is that very skinny skinny person But somehow, like, people were projecting on me and I started projecting that on myself as well, that I wasn't strong or I was, like, weak because so skinny, like, almost invisible. 
so I, I sort of started in my teenage years to connect that also with my sexuality that I simply wasn't strong, powerful, orgasmic, like just blank pretty much. Those ideas bled into her sexual experiences in adulthood too, affecting her desire for sex and her relationships, including with her longtime partner, Philip, who she's still with today. Early in their relationship, Mariah noticed a familiar pattern unfolding. It was sort of like we were in for a couple of years in our relationship and things would slowly start to get flat, how they would usually go in my past relationships as well like in the beginning exciting but then like kind of quite quickly I would kind of grow cold and just like not the love but just like my body wouldn't crave for more that challenged us in the relationship just because he was just in a different different level of libido and then how much he would want that to have with me and celebrate that with me that same kind of scenario had played out about six months into most of her relationships, and she really tried to navigate it well with Philip. How are you managing that during that time? Yeah, I think that's always the tricky part for anyone who's having low libido and not wanting to irritate your partner because you love them, and in the same time, you like withdrawing, and yeah, it's like this back and forth. Yeah, I think I sort of managed in a probably not so healthy way to just like do it every now and then, you know, and sometimes it would be sort of fun, but like the beginning of getting into it would be harder. It definitely wasn't something that I'm very proud of. At that point, I didn't have the sex education to know, okay, how do I best know my body what type of intimacy would work now in my situation best. And I would just go still with the default then, doing it anyways, just to make my partner happy. And of course, this is, I think, what most individuals with low libido would do until they hurt themselves so much that it's really going off the flame completely. And then... I think that's most of the sad parts where you have dead bedrooms and partners cheating on their partner and marriages breaking and all these tragic relationships falling apart. It wasn't a very good time in my life. And before that, I think I had these moments many times as well. So so there was definitely some healing required, you know, to kind of realize, okay, I've actually been not consensual with myself. Like I've, I've, I've been allowing partners to engage with me sexually, even though I wasn't feeling it. Admitting that to herself, she said, was hard. And a lot of these challenges went unspoken. Had you been talking about the, the libido differences around that time or no? A little bit every now and then. Like it wasn't completely that we wouldn't talk at all about it, but we both knew that something was going on and we had to change something. About two years into the relationship, while those challenges were carrying on, Mariah's job as a social worker led her to India, where she worked on an NGO project for women. Philip joined her to India, and it was there that they learned of something that would turn out to be game-changing, an erotic vulva massage workshop. I was living in this expat community and uh, yeah, someone just came up talking about this workshop they did and what they learned. And I was like, oh, wow, like that's interesting. Like I suddenly had that same feeling of when I was a child discovering new things with my, my friends, like, okay, so there's actually stuff out there instead of just, you know, doing it how you sort of know it from Hollywood movies or maybe some porn. I, th I think it, it just sparked th that curiosity and I told my partner about it and he was like completely, wow, that, let's go there. Like, it sounds amazing. Aww. Yeah, I, th I think from that moment and there wasn't a lot of fear or, or a lot of like holding back. It was just that one information that we needed, right, to just do it and, and that it exists and it's not that it's not something scary. Like getting that recommendation by someone, you know, like definitely makes it easier. 
And that sort of opened just a new opportunity for us to explore something entirely different, just a new frame of intimacy, a new practice without having penetrative sex that would still be intimate, but just something entirely different. The course was very helpful, she said, but the sexual awakening happened while they were doing their very sexy homework behind closed doors. I was just receiving pretty much a full body oil massage. It felt so real because where we lived in that little hotel in uh, in Rishikesh, you know, you could hear the, the music of Indians, of some Bollywood sound close by, like somehow this Kama Sutra adventure, you know, that you would be going through um, very surreal somehow. Ah. And yeah, I, I, I just kind of was super relaxed. Like, like the nice thing is just receiving just a full body massage. And at that point, I didn't even have the, the vulva massage yet. I, I simply received just, you know, my legs, my arms, my face, belly. So everything was like super, super relaxed. And I think only that already gave me sort of that opportunity to just let go even further and just having a very, very vulnerable moment in my body. So when my partner asked me if, if he's allowed to touch my vulva, like, like it was also a very mindful step of that, like asking and then consenting to that. And I think that was another like big aha moment, just like, oh, okay, like just ask and then answer honestly in that very relaxed, very good state. And that's when everything started to shift for Mariah. Now she was being very honest and consensual with herself, as well as with Philip. So with that consensual touch and then further also penetration, so outside massage of the vulva, but also inside massage of the vaginal canal and G-spot area and cervical area, I suddenly realized that I haven't really explored it in that way. I was still scared of penetration somehow because it just felt very strange and I didn't really know, like nobody would tell me about it. Like, am I even allowed to go so deep? So yeah, just that moment of, of sort of uh, learning step by step and, and exploring the outside, the inside parts, stretching the labia, pressing it, like rubbing it, finding new ways of, of just pleasing it. And then also discovering my cheese spot area, which I completely didn't know at that point existed. Like even the term cheese spot, I didn't know. I've never heard of squirting before, never heard of cheese spot before. And it was something that we learned in that workshop on that day. As Philip explored those areas back at the hotel during her erotic massage, just wow. Suddenly, I just felt this sort of pressure, like bearing down sensation, almost like you have to pee, but it's not really pee. And you either you let go of that sort of pressure and just release and then gush and just squirting all over the bed and just big surprise and like, wow, okay, what's happening? Just realizing in that moment, oh my gosh, like my body is so freaking powerful and like I just did that and and it came even with an incredible like pleasure wave or pleasure experience and I think that was for me definitely the key key aha moment to see sex education as something that's not just for my own pleasure and my partner's pleasure but as like a tool for real empowerment so my social worker brain also kicked in like okay we have to do something about this starting with continuing her own journey first she said she knew that healing remained around her libido challenges and that disconnect that she'd had from her own body's pleasure the awakening she experienced during that massage also led her to grapple with some sexual trauma 
later on, I, I realized that I was also sexually assaulted a couple of times, just not having that awareness for it. And then once you dig in it, you suddenly unfold and uncover things you didn't know you actually had experienced, but you did. And then you, of course, just cleaning up the mess and, and owning it properly. Gradually, Mariah found that healing and a lot more pleasure, too. Obviously, this changed the course of your life in so many ways. How did it impact your desire? Hmm. It definitely kickstarted something new. I also stopped uh, taking the anti-baby pill in, in like birth these, control. Yeah, birth control in this following months, which I think had an extra boost on on my hormonal levels anyhow, which I mean you can now read more and more studies around birth control, anti-baby pill being yeah, really not a, a great uh a way for especially women in teenage years because it, it it can cause a lot of depression low libido especially if you're already having like a low libido like it diminishes pretty much the rest of what's left it's sad because i mean it's definitely a powerful way of protecting yourself against pregnancy but yeah i didn't saw it as worth it so we found the condom uh <laughs> again and and that worked really well and yeah i think there are many ways of protection for sure and they affect people differently too right so like if one pill is not working for you i feel like there's so many choices and a lot of times it's just like okay i'll take that one and we don't even get the information about all the things that can happen and also not to accept the things that yeah. are going well and especially if you're starting in your teenage years like you're just starting out yeah and 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 so you don't see the before after effect and if you're taking birth control pill you know until your 30s you have no idea how it, sex life feels without, without it, it. And, it's so true like yeah. before your desire really is part of your life it's kind of yeah, it can be masked. yeah. that's such a yeah good so, point. so coming back to your question with there were many sort of impulses from the outside from the inside from this key experience that just completely opened me up in a different way but I, I I think I still live with like simply a lower drive just because that's more of my nature but I know now you know how to handle it how to talk about it with my partner how to also get myself into a mood and especially not to break consent and being truthful with myself. Were you able then to know what you wanted more or were you able to ask for certain things or maybe just move your body in different ways did it impact the actual like physical steps you were taking during sex not to be so like mechanical mm. but yeah yeah I think so I for example realized that I, I would usually just be very passive and just lie on my back and sort of let it happen and obviously like in a dance if you're just standing and your partner is trying to dance, it's not working. Like you have cold feet, you're like stiff, you're cold. No passion is flowing, no pleasure is flowing. So so you need to really move. I think in, in the massage, for example, my body got warmed up through the massage. So what I think I know now is, is I need to move my body beforehand. I need to waking it up, get like my juice flowing, my blood flow you know, heart and, and, and get it all up. And then with that movement, sort of that drive is it's jump started. And then, and then you can take it from there. I think that was quite a big revelation. No more just lying there and letting it happen, she said. And that applies to Mariah's sexual discovery journey today too. Not just sex itself, but staying open to changes in her life and desires. And while she's reckoned with realizations around those early harassment experiences, the ones that lowered her libido early on, she likes looking forward. Now I'm a mother, I have two young kids, like I've went through birth and what that means to your sex life, what kids mean to your sex life. So like I'm now in a different sexual life cycle than I was before when I sort of kickstarted my sexual empowerment journey. 
I'm still discovering new things and trying out new things that work for me today. So I, I feel like it's it's like a lifelong journey. And I think with those feelings, I think it, it was good to go backwards and feeling those emotions like anger and frustration and more like sadness, I guess. But I do like more to look forward. And there is definitely in my healing journey, some steps where I went to a sex therapist, a psychotherapist, and just working through these things that sort of helped me then to kind of put a, a check on that. And for now, it's it's good to kind of tuck it away. And I know it, it feels a little bit undusted. It's a little bit cleared up, but it's not like continuing to influence my life at this point because there's so many other <laughs> things and challenges yeah. that influence my sex life today but that's not rooted in my sexual assault experience but just yeah because life as a mom and an, as an entrepreneur is is just a different thing and you you navigate with different time available for your sex life so so it's fun to get creative on your on your schedule <laughs> Similar creativity has allowed Mariah and Philip to build Beducated into this hugely robust library of sex education. It's something that her vulva massage awakening planted a seed for, though it didn't evolve right away. For about two years after the massage experience, the couple explored the whole sex-positive world. They took various workshops and they worked with all different teachers. Then about nine years ago, Mariah started a sex ed blog. And about four years after that, they launched Beducated, which she described like this. I think it's a great space to start out if you haven't been to a sex positive event or if you haven't worked with maybe a sex coach before or therapist before. It's something to tap your toes in and kind of get addicted immediately just because you realize oh my gosh, there's so much to learn. There's so many techniques and tools and ways to experience a different intimate life, different fantasies, different practices from Tantra and more like spiritual, mindful, sacred sex to kinky sex, BDSM, spanking, role play, dirty talk, like the whole spectrum of it. And I think if you suddenly have this variety and multitude and, and huge spectrum of things you could try out, you, you start exploring and you start to sort of learn also a lot about yourself. Okay, what am I like clicking on? What is interesting to me? Like just navigating through these different choices is just super interesting if you do that by yourself or with a partner. And then you notice suddenly, okay, I, I never thought about that this could be interesting to me. Let's explore how to implement spanking more into our intimate life. There's a really fun and mindful way to do that and exploring pain or exploring like really how to communicate better about your desires, like those fine-tuning things in your relationship that often people struggle with, kind of from the basics to oral sex to pretty much everything. So I think the platform provides a really safe space that you can stream in your comfort of your home without needing to travel or go anywhere. A space like that has remained important to Mariah over the years, having learned what can happen when you set your sights on sexual growth and discovery, something she hopes we will all prioritize. I think for me, our sex life and how much it's it's required to become that super empowering tool next to a healthy diet, sports, you know, we're optimized so much in our lives. We're optimizing our career. We're like advancing on our know-how. We're trying to get better at so much. And somehow sex always is like rotting in the corner or a low prio and I think it's it's really worth it to invest in it and even taking it up as a lifelong learning challenge wherever you're at on your journey. So yes, there are a lot of downs, there are a lot of ups with it. But I, I think if if we are, you know, seeing the challenges especially as an opportunity to grow, like the end result is just magnificent and so beautiful and so powerful for our individual empowerment. 
so if I'm able, you know, to share with my partner what I like, and I do that in the most intimate private space, like which is the most scariest thing, I'm definitely able to share, you know, what I want and how much salary I want to have with my boss. So it's like the best training for, and the most scary training, but the best for any kind of situation in your life. So I'd, I'd say, yeah, use that as, you know, your secret sauce for all the other things that you do. You can start any day, like even maybe your brain has been pushing it a little bit to the side or you've been like, yeah, any, any day I want to do that someday. Um, do it today. It's just the best timing. <laughs> The Beducated team wanted to extend a special offer to the Girl Boner community. You can try Beducated for free for one day and then sign up for a subscription and save 25%. Just use the link down in the show notes or head to beducated.com and enter the code GIRLBONER at checkout. The site has a roster of over 40 different experts from gynecologists to sex coaches, so you can search around and find someone who resonates with you. You can also learn about the brand new Beducated AI sex coach on the site. To stay in my loop, sign up for email updates on my site, augustmclaughlin.com. I send a note, often with a fun little survey, once every month or two. And if you're enjoying Girl Boner Radio, I would so appreciate a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or the iTunes Store. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>